Brian Koberger allegedly dumped trash into his neighbor's garbage cans as he hid evidence linking him to the four Idaho student murders. FBI agents watching his parents' home in Pennsylvania reportedly saw Koberger wearing surgical gloves go house to house at 4 a.m. with garbage bags. The agents immediately go retrieve the trash. That's a good thing they did because they found in that trash discarded items that match back to the sheet that was left beside one of the dead victims on the bed. Chilling new details are emerging about the night of the murders. Prosecutors say at 2.47 a.m., Koberger turned off his cell phone before heading for Moscow, Idaho. The murder spree began around 4.12 a.m. At 4.25 a.m., surveillance video shows Koberger's car speeding from the scene. He turned his phone back on at 4.48 a.m. as he made his way back home. Prosecutors say he actually returned to the murder scene at 9.12 a.m. that morning and stayed in the area for 14 minutes. We know, based on this affidavit, a knife sheath was left in the home. Was this the murderer returning, wanting to try to somehow collect what he forgot at the scene? Or, as we know in our experience, sometimes murderers go back to the scene just to see what's happening. We're also learning more about what Koberger did later that day. Cell phone records show that roughly eight and a half hours after the murders, Koberger drove an hour from his home to the small town of Clarkston, Washington, he drove past a drive through coffee stand and then went shopping at an Albertsons grocery store. The next day, he drove 100 miles to this isolated area of Idaho. Why remains a mystery. I don't know what, if anything, we'll find there except possibly the murder weapon. Legal experts say the evidence in the case seems to be overwhelming. You have a very powerful piece of DNA evidence from the scene linked back to him. DNA is super compelling. Juries attach a lot of value to DNA. So could the defense strike a deal that would save Koberger from the death penalty? There's no way that's going to happen at this point. I, I, I suppose weirder things have happened, but this is way too early to be talking about any kind of a deal. I spoke with the father of murder victim, Kaylee Gonsalves. How would you feel about that? I would I'd be against it and I would fight it, but... I still have other parents that I have to work with. More questions are being raised today about surviving roommate Dylan Mortensen. She came face to face with the masked intruder and didn't call 911 for eight hours. Police quote her as saying she was in a state of frozen shock. I was shocked. It's it's not what you would expect to see in a case. You know, we all have this Hollywood version of what we think people will do and say, behave like. Because I knew partially of, of of, of pieces of the story that's why i asked the coroner so we're like could they have called 911 if that was called would, would my daughter still be alive and she said no no we'll have more on the story a bit later in the broadcast